Astro Server Islands are the future of the way we build performant web applications. It's the perfect blend of static content generated on a CDN with server-side rendered content when you need it. So let's see how we can improve the performance of this pricing section by using Server Islands in Astro. All right, so this website is astrocourse.dev and this is the landing page for my Astro course. Now, the main thing you need to know about this is all of this content on the site could be completely static. None of this is coming from a database. None of this is coming from uh, headless CMS. All of this is just kind of hard coded into the application, except for one thing, and that is the pricing component. So right now we have the full price packages being displayed, but what happens if we then put in a coupon as a query parameter? So let's say we use the coupon for students. This is JQ or student JQQ courses. This is 50% off, you can use it if you want. If we go back down, we now see that this is showing the discounted rate. It also shows the coupon. And then the link in here that's generated to go to Podia actually includes that discount as well. So the downside of this is I had to make this entire page server-side rendered so that I could get access to these search parameters inside of the URL. But with server islands, I no longer have to do that. I can make this entire page static and then just make requests to get this dynamically server-side rendered information from the server. So let's see how to do it. So I've got a starter project set up that just copied over some of the base code for styling for these two different cards. Now, right here, these prices are completely hard coded. There's no coupons being taken into account. So I want to show you really quickly how we would do this before server islands by making this entire application server side rendered. So inside of our Astro config, we would take, we would define a new property for output and this would be server. So now all the pages on here are going to be server side rendered by default. So that means in any of my components now, I have the ability to get access to query parameters. So let's take a look at one of these. We have a few different items inside of our pricing card that are going to need to be server rendered. The buy now button, because it needs to update the link based on that property. And then we need the actual price to be server rendered as well. So let's go into the price component. And let's just start to look at the URL from Astro. So inside of here, we can log the astro.url. And then we'll come back here and refresh this page. And then now you get to see that we have access to all the things inside of the URL, including our search params. So with these search params, we can call the get function to get the search param associated with the value or the key of coupon. So right now there's nothing, but if we add in a question mark coupon equals and then student JQQ courses, we should now see that it's able to log this. So from here, we could do a lookup in a database and I'll actually show you how to do a full database integration in a second. But let's say we start with our discounts and we just have a hard coded map here, simulating querying this from a database. Again, we'll get this in a second. So let's say we have our student JQQ courses and this is 50% uh, off. And then we have XYZ coupon, which is 20% off. So the key here is the coupon and then the value is gonna be the actual discount. So we can say the discount is going to be the discounts of, and then we need to get the coupon. So we can assign this to a variable. So const coupon equals, get that there. And then we'll pass on coupon as the name. And then we can just give a discount, uh, default discount of zero or something like that. So it's saying that coupon might be null. So let's just give a default discount of zero. And then let's go and update this if we have coupon. So if we have an actual coupon, we'll update the discount to be discounts with coupon. All right, that's giving us a little bit of typing issues, which I think we can get past. So let's save that and let's go back to our application. And you can see that we're actually seeing the crossed out version here. Now we need to calculate the discounted price. So inside of this, we could update the discounted price to be, we could take our original cost and then we can subtract the cost times the discount. And then we can round that whole thing. And this cost times discount is gonna be divided by 100. And here we're doing a percentage instead of a decimal. That's why we're dividing by 100 here. So hopefully now we should see that we have a discounted price and it looks like it's actually coming through correctly. So we have 150 divided by two gives you 75. 
75 divided by two actually gives you a decimal, but we round that to the nearest uh, dollar. Now that works, but the downside again is that we're having to make this entire page server side rendered. If we go back to the full page, you can see there's a lot of content in here that's completely static and we don't need to actually render all of that on the server. So what if we could render all this on a CDN and then pull in the pieces that we need? Well, that's where server islands come in. So let's look for Astro server islands. And in here in this announcement, they kind of give you the idea of you can just add a tag here for server defer. And that will allow this individual component to be deferred until after the static content has been loaded. And then we're able to pull in that content dynamically. So what we're going to do is go into our Astro config and we're going to uh, make this a hybrid output. So from here, we can come to our index page and we can mark this as static. So inside of here, we can say const pre render equals true. So this is going to make this entire root page a pre rendered page. And that means that our components are no longer going to run on the server. So if we come back to our locally running application, you can see that we're not getting any discounts, even though we still have that parameter passed inside of the URL. So now we need to get access to that. So to enable server actions inside of our Astro application, we need to come into our Astro config for now, and we need to add an experimental section. And inside of experimental, we're going to write server islands equals true. This is going to give access into being able to use server islands before they're actually fully baked into the framework. So we should have that done. And now we can go back to our pricing card and we can mar mark this as server defer. So this is going to mark this to say this should be a server rendered island. Now, if we come back and refresh our page, you may expect this to work. But the problem is now we no longer have access to the original URL that was coming in. Now, this API might change. So something to keep in mind in the future. Let's go into the price component and let's look at the Astro URL now. So let's just log out Astro URL. And you're going to see something really interesting about how this works. So let's make sure we do that correctly. And if we inspect this, this automatically refresh. If we inspect this, it, it is making a request to slash underscore server server island slash price. And interestingly, we can see this inside of our console as well. If we come into our network and actually watch these requests as they take place. So if we watch the fetch request, we can see that it's going to make a fetch request to that URL that we just saw. And that thing is going to return back with this markup. So notice that this request is not coming to if we go back to this and look at the headers and the URL, notice that request does not include this original parameter in it, the query parameter that we're looking for and need to access. So instead of accessing this from the Astro URL, we can instead access this from the refer string from the browser. So let's back out of this and let's grab the Astro request. And then we'll grab the headers and then let's get the refer header. And this should actually be capital R and just one R there. So let's assign this to a new variable. This is actually going to refer to the refer string. So this is just the string from the refer header. And then from there, we can create a new URL so we can have const referrer, referrer, that's hard to say, URL equals new URL and then pass in the refer string. Now this is going to give us an error because we don't know if we're actually going to get a refer string in here. So let's actually just move this logic down and say, if we get a refer string, then let's do all the work below. We'll see why in a second. So let's just surround all of that. And then I'm going to move the creation of this URL inside of this logic as well. Now we also want to have our coupon. And then we can extract the coupon from the refer URL. So we'll say coupon equals, and we'll take our refer URL, and then we'll call the search params dot get just the same way that we did before. So we're just working with getting the URL from a different place. So inside of here, we get the coupon and then we do our check and then we reference this on discounts and we go from there. So now, if we refresh, we should see that this is working. Now we haven't done anything with the buy button. Now we can kind of skip that. The only reason that makes a difference in this case is because it's linking to Podia and inside of Podia. Let's see if we pull up the buy now button. We need to inside of the link that we create, we would need to add a new property in here for data coupon and then pass in that coupon. So the logic would be the exact same for this link. We would uh, grab the URL on the server and then pass it in. 
So let's see how we would set this up with a real database and not just hard coded values. So I'm gonna open up Zeta. Zeta is a database that I've been using for all of my demos. They are a partner of mine, but I really enjoy working with them. And they allow you to have a hosted version of a Postgres database. So you can sign in for a free account. After you do, you'll need to create a database. And in this case, we'll call this discounts database. Now make sure to enable the direct access to Postgres flag here. This allows us to use Prisma to interact with this database. So we can go ahead and create this. We have our discounts table. And then we can, or we have our discounts database. Now we can go ahead and create a new schema for this. So we'll add an empty table. We'll call this discount with a capital D and we'll go ahead and add this table. Now inside of here, we can use this editor to be able to create the different properties that we need. So in this case, we're gonna have a discount, which is an integer, and this cannot be null. All right, so we have our discount property, and then we'll also need the uh, coupon, which will be in this case, a text input. This cannot be null as well, and we'll go ahead and create that. All right, so we have our discount and our coupon. So those are the only properties that we need. We just need a coupon to look up and then the associated discount with it. We can go ahead and create a couple of dummy records in here. So we'll have the discount be 50 and this will be a JQQ student courses and we'll save that. And then we'll have one more for 20% off and this will be XYZ coupon. So now we need to set up Prisma in our application to actually be able to query this. So let's go back to our code and I have Prisma already installed on my machine. So let's start by running an MPX Prisma init. And we can say yes on here. And what this will do is this will create a Prisma schema file inside of here. So we have our Prisma schema file. We haven't, uh, we don't have a table yet. And then inside of our environment variables, we're gonna need to have a database URL. And I think we need to create this file. So let's go ahead and do that. So inside of the root directory, we'll create the .env file. Oh, actually this does, does exist, so let's open this. And you can see they have a database URL. This is interesting that it's empty but full of spaces, that's weird. Uh, but we need to fill in this database URL. So to do this, we need to actually get the database URL from uh, Zeta. So inside of settings for this database, we can uh, copy the Postgres endpoint, and this is gonna be the database URL that we need. Oh, I think I have an extension turned on, cloak for hiding secrets. Okay, I'm actually confused as to why this not is not showing. I know there's an extension called cloak, which we can use to hide secrets and then, okay, there we go. So somehow that got turned on in my settings and I didn't know why. So anyway, this is the URL for our Postgres database. And then in the middle of this, we have our API key, which we need to replace. So inside of here, we'll go to our profile and we'll do account settings. And then we can scroll down to personal API keys. Obviously I have a bunch and this will be the server islands demo. We'll save that. We should be able to copy this. I'll delete mine right after. And then we'll just paste that into the database URL. So we have our environment variable created. We have our table created. We have our database created. Now we need to actually sync up the schema to Prisma. So we can do MPX Prisma DB pull. This will pull the schema from what's already inside of our database and list this inside of our actual schema here. So inside of here, you can see we have our discount model, which has uh, the discount integer, the coupon string, and then these are some Zeta properties that are automatically generated for us, the ID version created at and updated at. Now to be able to interact with this, I'm gonna create inside of source, I'm gonna create a new folder for lib, and then we're gonna create a db.ts file, db.ts. And then I'm gonna paste in some boilerplate code for Prisma. So inside of here, we are getting from the Prisma client, which we'll make sure we have in a second. And then we're creating a singleton instance to make sure we limit the amount of actual instances of this Prisma, Prisma connection that we can create. Uh, and then this is going to come from environment variables, which, which in this case, this case is gonna come from import.meta.env.node.env. So let's go ahead and install the Prisma client. So npm install Prisma slash client, and that should get rid of this. All right, and then let's go back to our price component. So the, last thing, so the last thing we need to do is actually generate the types inside of our Prisma client. So let's do MPX Prisma generate. And this should generate the types that we'll be able to use based on the actual schema that we have defined. So let's go up to the top of the file. Let's import Prisma 
from that database file that we created. So this is inside of lib and inside of the database file. So now if we start to type in here with our Prisma client, we can do Prisma dot, and then we get IntelliSense for the tables that we're working with. And then we can do a find first. We actually should have done a find unique if we made the discount or the coupon code unique, which we should have, but I forgot. So we can do find first. And then inside of here, we'll pass an object with the where, and then that will be an object that's going to relate the coupon property to the coupon that we've gotten outside of the search params. So this should return to us our discount record, and we can make sure to await that. And then from that discount record, we can get the actual discount. So discount record dot discount. And then we already have our coupon. Now this is saying we may not have gotten back a discount record. This actually could be returned as null. So we can add another check in here to, to make sure if we have a discount record to then do these other things. So let's move these. So let's move both of those inside of there. So let's just take a look at what we have again. We're checking to get the refer string. If we actually get that, which we should get that every time, but we get the refer string. And then from that, we grab a search params for a coupon. And then if we have that coupon, we query the database for that record. If we get back, back the discount record based on the coupon, we're gonna look at uh, associating, we're gonna make sure one, that these things are in order. And we're gonna set the discount to be the discount associated with that record. And then everything else should just stay the same. All right, so let's clean up a little bit of the code before. So we'll get rid of this hard-coded discounts. And let's just take a look at what we have. We're first grabbing the refer string. So inside of the server island, the actual Astro URL is the URL that is the request for the island itself. So that's not what we want. We want the refer. So where does that request come from? That's in the headers. And then from there, we can uh, convert that to a URL and then get the search params for the actual coupon. Now, if we have a coupon, we go and query the database that matches that coupon. If we get that discount record, we then update the discount to be the discount associated with that record. So let's go and uh, test this out. So we should see a refresh here. That looks good. And then let's try a different coupon. So I think we did X, Y, Z coupon. And this should be 20% off. So you can see that this is being updated. It is also showing the coupon that's being applied. And you can still see inside the network tab, this is all coming from server side requests. Well, all this I think was working as I expected, but I realized I didn't put the const pre-render. I put it in the markup instead of up here. So this should ensure if we export this, so I missed this all the way around. If we export this uh, pre-render flag, then this should be generated as a static page, which I think it was already. And then we can still see if we refresh, we still see these server requests coming in. But what's interesting is if we go and do an inspect on this, or actually, sorry, I look at the page source and we search for 120, there's nothing inside of here. There's also nothing inside of here uh, outside of 150 milliseconds for our dollars. So you can see that all this content is being served statically except for these two individual pieces, which is really cool. So this is now a beautiful combination of static content served from a CDN with little pockets or islands, if you will, of being able to make the request back to the server through an HTTP endpoint to be able to get the dynamic information, which is really, really cool. Now this is the Astro equivalent to in Next.js, what is partial pre-rendering. It's the same idea where you combine static and dynamic components on the same route. Basically all this stuff gets shipped statically too. And you can see the, the thing in here for static and dynamic. All this static content gets hosted on a CDN and then these little pockets, the cart and the dynamic piece down here for the recommended section, those are all being pulled dynamically from the server, but it's not slowing down the time to first byte because you're able to ship this static first experience, which is what we all want and where we get the best performance. So all in all, I think this is super neat. I'm gonna be using this and updating my Astro course to incorporate this. I'm actually planning on building out kind of a full dashboard as a demo app for coupons. So something that has CRUD, that has auth, that has database, and then to be able to show something like this on a page as well that goes and queries the coupon. So if you're interested in that and or if you have ideas of what you'd like to see detail wise included in that, let me know in the comments below. And in the meantime, if you're interested in learning more about Astro, you can go to astrocourse.dev to check out the course. And then I will have more content on some of these latest features in the next couple of months as I get it out. Anyways, hope you enjoy the video and I'll catch you next time.